kids who get good grades just consistently stay focused. That's what it's about. Welcome to week three of Five Two Parenting. We're excited that you're with us. And it's a few weeks into the school year, so we know exactly what topic we want to talk about next. Yes, definitely. Our five two principle for this week is that we don't blame the teachers for bad grades. Mm, that's right? a big one because that's just so easy to do. Uh, Romans eight thirty seven says that uh, we are more than conquerors in Christ, and part of teaching our kids to uh, walk with Christ and learn to you know, figure it out is we don't blame teachers for, for grades. Right. And, uh, you know, we're talking about school in particular, but this is just a general bigger principle of you're not a victim. Yes. And that's going to go all through their lives. So school is just a great place to learn that really. So we want to not accept the excuses of everybody in the class did bad or, you know, they just didn't teach us that suddenly half of the test was on things we never covered. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's going to be a few drop balls in there, but in the end, uh, that's not our approach as parents. It's you're the one responsible and you can do this. Yeah. So as a parent, probably the best thing that you can do to start as a good starting place, if your child is struggling in a class or something, is to connect with that teacher. Make sure. Now, I found this much easier to do in elementary school when they only had one teacher mm -hmm. versus middle and high school when they had a different teacher for every subject. It can be tricky. But you can do it, and I would say just make that effort through email, phone call, whatever, to connect with that teacher. When I met one of the kids' teachers, I heard this a long time ago. I picked it up. I always go to the teacher. I said, hey, let's make a deal right right at the beginning of the year. I won't, I won't believe half of what they say about you if you don't believe half of what they say about us. Yeah. <laughs> Another great thing to do is a weekly check-in uh, with your child. Um, basically just checking in on, you know, what are the assignments that are due, when, when are tests, and work that with the family schedule. Our family schedule is pretty busy with sports this time mm -hmm. of year, yeah. and so it can get really busy during the week to try to do that. So we're finding um, that the weekend is better. And I'll be honest, this can change from season to season. Absolutely. It can change from year to year. You're going to need a new game plan each year. That's right, because uh, when one of your kids is in soccer, it, they're going to have to manage their school load differently than when they don't have a sport. So this whole idea of trying to use the weekend particularly to say, let's look ahead and let's what's your game plan for how you're going to do your schoolwork. And remember, it's not just about your schoolwork, but if you're at church Wednesday night or you have a game or the family next weekend is going to be doing, uh, you know, I, I believe that. Grades are really just an issue of consistency. You don't have to be some super smart intellectual person to get a good grade. Are there going to be some subjects more challenging than others? Sure there are. But in the end, grades are really just about consistency and just managing your time well. That's what it's about. Um, but yeah, I would really encourage you to have that conversation with your child about, you know, what are your expectations for this? What, what do you consider a, an acceptable grade? Um, while you might be thinking we want A's and B's, they may be saying, well, I'm okay with a C or a D or a D. And what we have found uh, through the years is that um, really we're okay with a lower grade if we have seen them really apply themselves and work hard and study. And then they still come out with a C, maybe yeah. even a D. Like I would rather see you work really hard at that. Um, but then if I don't see you working hard at all and you get a B, I may have more of a problem with that because I have seen you haven't applied yourself and you could have done so much better. So really it's about, you know, you want your child to reach that full potential and be all that they can be. Yeah. And school really is a place of understanding victory in life. When you're not doing well in school, it can, and when a student, you know, a child isn't doing well, it can really affect their self image. It can lead them to bad mistakes in life. And so really just the issue of, we, uh, we've we told our kids, look, I know uh, schools talk about you shouldn't be bullied in school. I don't want you to be bullied by school. I don't want you to feel like, man, I've gotten five bad grades and now I've got to like study and be crazy and I haven't really paid attention, but now I need to pick my grade up. Like don't be pushed around by school. Do the work ahead of time, get ahead of your classes or get the first good grade, work really hard. And then maybe you can lighten up as you go. Yeah, so we just encourage you this week to go ahead and have that conversation, you know, about the goals for this semester and this school year and um, see what you need to do to accomplish that. 
and work together with your child. It'll be great. Yeah, so that's the five too. Go be great parents.